everyone, I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two running backs will take the field today in hopes of leading their team to victory. It's Freeman's Falcons going up against Ingram's Saints. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Atlanta Falcons. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brandon Gordon. To my left, as always, he's Charles Davis. And, Charles, we saw in the open, we've got a couple of great running backs in this game tonight, each capable of putting a team on his back. And I'm excited to talk about the runners, not just the passers who have a big hand and who's going to win this game. Both of these guys are do it all, can run it, can catch it. I can't wait to get this one started. Here's a punter, Thomas Morstead, to get this one started. And we are underway from the Superdome. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be led out by the third overall pick of the 2008 draft, the man they call Matty Ice, quarterback Matt Ryan. Always knew he'd be a gym rat, very cerebral player, a guy that beats you with his mind as well as his physical attributes. But the best part, poise under pressure. He knows how to bring a team back in the fourth quarter. They run, Devontae Freeman. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they're in sync, as we're seeing so far, with that continuity. Devontae Freeman, they're not going to get him. Touchdown, Falcons. Devontae Freeman, 58 yards. And the Falcons have taken the early lead. You talk about explosion plays, there's one pretty much right out of the gate. And now they get to ride a wave of emotion, momentum, everything. Just as you just as you described, right out of the gate, big sprint, touchdown, they're excited. But on the other side, they've got to guard against a major letdown because they hit them right in the gut with that one. And now you start to question yourself a little bit when you give up the touchdown on the opening drive. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback, the former Purdue Boilermaker. It's Drew Brees. Drew Brees prepares as well as any quarterback, I believe, in NFL history. Meticulous in his preparation, diligent. This guy studies everything, works through everything, and will not leave the facility until he's satisfied each and every practice day. <laughs> Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Thomas. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The 15 yards there on the catch and run. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. They run it again with Kamara. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. And here now the defensive starters for Atlanta. Atlanta's defense is built on speed. We talk about that all the time. But Don Terry Poe adds an extra element at the nose tackle position. Big enough to overwhelm centers in the run game. Also quick enough and fast enough to get past them and guards in the pass game. That's exactly why Atlanta went to get him. And now it's a third and four situation for the offense. 
Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he's got Sneed. And he is knocked down from the side at the 44-yard line. Breeze finding Sneed there for a same first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you go lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And he's got it over the middle. Flaner. And he'll go down at the 28. Breeze finding Flaner for New Orleans first. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive going to plan so far. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl. But third MVP this past season, and what he did at age 40, really something, right, Charles? Absolutely phenomenal. Ended up beating out Todd Gurley, the running back for the Los Angeles Rams. But he would have traded it for a Super Bowl win, don't you think? How about this? The last nine NFL MVPs to play in the Super Bowl that same season, 0-9. Yeah. Getting yeah, all the way back to Kurt Warner in, what, 1999, where he won the double? We were going over that stat earlier. That is hard to believe. But he would have been the MVP had the Patriots pulled that one out. Yeah, he still has five rings, though. Five Super Bowl titles for Brady. A uh, Falcon first down. Ryan to his young tight end, Hooper. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be. Rush coming, and he's taken down. A.J. Klein coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating him up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. So possession one ended in six. Possession two likely going to end in a punt. Yeah, that's okay. They've just got to get back to what they worked on in the opening drive and continue to make a few adjustments along the way. It won't be exact because the defense will make a few adjustments themselves. Just get back to your game plan. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. 
Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice gain. Breeze now on first down. And the tight end has it. It's Flaner. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. A gain of six there on first. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. They give them 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn. That'll bring up second down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Now Breeze throwing the out route incomplete. It's Thomas, and he's going to get this inside the 30. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Kobe Flaner, the tight end, is intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. Throwing deep here for... And he's got it. Coleman. Touchdown, Saints. Brandon Coleman. 37 yards, and the Saints are able to cash in for six. Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack on the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And back onto the field now comes Devontae Freeman. And he's made it easy for us to put together a highlight package. Just wondering what he ate before this one started. <laughs> Let's include that in the package, right? Get the gourmet out here, figure it all out. And you're guaranteed he'll do that going forward as well because with a game like this, you don't want to change things too much. Oh, yeah, you also want to continue to get that great blocking he's received today, too. Yeah, kudos to the guys up front indeed. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Ryan on first down. Gets it off to Freeman. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine on the play, and that'll make it second and short. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. How about that one? The so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Hey, 
Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 10-7 our score. We'll head back to New Orleans after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They've got a third down and a yard to start things out. Here comes the D swarming to the line. On third down, Devontae Freeman. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Freeman again, a first down carry. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And he's got some space here. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you're talking about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. <laughs> and what a big time play there. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. First and ten, here's Breeze. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Now a first down carry. It's Camaro. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape. Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. Breeze now on first down. Escaping the pressure right. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Now Camaro. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Breeze to Ingram on the draw. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. 
He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Now they'll throw with Breeze. And he rifles one incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. From the gun on third down, Breeze. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, it's been a tough go for him. These guys have been driving down the field, but defensively, once they got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. And Lutz's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now the defense definitely showing blitz here. Now a play fake here on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Bad time tail. Coming on the blitz, he gets him for a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. On second down, Ryan. Hits his target. It's Taylor Gabriel. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A good pick up there. 13 yards as they get closer for third down. The Falcons on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Ryan finding Gabriel for the Falcon first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Back now. As I search for my cue card here, there we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play. Well read. Oh, thank you. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Cameron Jordan with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. 
the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So as it turns out, that sack does not wind up costing him, at least in terms of getting points, they get three. Yeah, once you see your quarterback go down the backfield, you think, uh-oh. But fortunately for them, their kicker came to the rescue and made sure they got something out of that drive after all. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. First down, Breeze. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Breeze looking to throw on third and two. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. And this will be taken at the 13. Oh, twisting away. And now running right through it. A great return there of 22 yards. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. and 10. It's Ryan. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Now Ryan on second down. And Jones has it over the middle. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. On first down, Ryan. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. So it's halftime here in New Orleans with the Saints out in front as we send you over to our headquarters in Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks, and welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Saints are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Falcons didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, they run. It's Devontae Freeman. And this long run goes for a touchdown as they take a 7-0 lead. Saints now late in the first. Ray Wilson's going to take down the QB here. This will go as a loss of 10. Sticking with the same drive. Here he'll look into the end zone, and he cap off the nine play drive with a TD, which takes the lead to three. Now early in the second, Vaccaro's able to zero in on the QB here. This goes for a loss of nine. So that'll do it from here in Orlando for the second half kickoff. Let's get back to New Orleans and Brandon Guy. To return it, Alvin Kamara. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? 
you adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Breeze again here on second and 10. Flushed out right. And he whips that one incomplete there. The target that time, Michael Thomas. Third down here. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Now Breeze on third down. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, Hard to get him started again occasionally. Bree's going to throw. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Grady Jarrett in there to drop him for a loss on the play. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And 21 yards there as they convert on third. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. A 10th carry for Kamara. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Now well, Breeze throwing on second down. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? Looking for his tight end fleeter, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Keanu Neal. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game, and there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. On third down, Ryan. And now he's going to go down in the end zone. Down goes Matt Ryan, and that's a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done partner as a quarterback sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head it's time to go tuck it and get all you can 
Throwing on first down is Breeze. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Here's Breeze to throw. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. And a nice gain of 21 yards. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. And an alley to run. Now Breeze lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, bounced right back on it, keeps possession. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Kobe Flaner, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Saints now at six to their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give him a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. Well, too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Second and ten. It's Ryan again. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. I would dare say that these guys would have liked to have given their defense a little bit more rest since they gave up a touchdown their last time out. But alas, my man, that's not going to happen. Yep, they're going to have to grab those helmets, get right back out there. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. This will be fielded at the 17. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost. You can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. 
Breeze on the draw, gives to Camaro. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Well, certainly running the ball pretty well on this drive. And all I remember as a secondary guy was if you're making a lot of tackles in a game, that's usually not good for your defense. You've got to figure out how to keep things in front of you because you know there's three levels. Defensive line, linebackers, and into the secondary. And if the third level is leading your team in tackles, as a general rule, things aren't going so well for your defense. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets them to third and three now. Well, that's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running play on first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. Eight yards there on a first down. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lava's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. To throw, it's Breeze. That's caught, it's Coleman. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off, sometimes you're just rounding it, sometimes there's a fake, sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. Buying time to his left. And he'll score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Drew Brees, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Saints add on to their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. Touchdown, Falcons! Julio Jones, 75 yards, and the Falcons get a bit closer. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. Breeze now on first down. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Now Breeze. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Brooks Reed in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. 
He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack. Although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you face an intentional grounding call. is the punt team now as this one sent away. Now a hit and a loose football. And that's what friends are for. Right. <laughs> as, as the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turn it over there, that's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. They go play action here on first down. Ryan hit, and he lost the football. And I do believe the offense got this back. Goodness, they did. Their own one-yard line is where they got it back, cutting it close here. On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Falcons. They'll have the football, but trailing on the scoreboard as we get set to begin the fourth. A near turnover, but the offense recovers it. Now they'll try to regroup on second. So the D-line's going to spread out. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. Shedding the tackler, and it gives him some room. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. 12 yards is the pick up there, and it'll be third and 10 now. But it looks like they caught him off guard on second and very long by running the football. All right, we always talk about tendency breakers and counters and doing things opposite the green, and that worked very well for him. Picked up really nice yardage, but he still have a lot of work to do on third down. And it's complete, Hooper. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. That one goes for 24 yards. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touch. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Banti Tail in there to get him for his second sack of the night. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Ryan, and he's got it. Got his man on the end route, complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 15 as that'll lead to third down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. The throw to the left side caught by Coleman. Give him three on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. 15 yards through the air on a first down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On first and 10, here's Breeze. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. The 20. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Thomas, 65 yards. And the Saints now add six to their lead. They were 
are still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is it bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jack. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Sheldon Rankins breaking through to get him for a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. False start offense. So that'll back him up five. The Falcons on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Ryan. It's caught. Jones. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. A phrase we said a lot last year, Ryan to Jones for a Falcon first down. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Show some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll make it second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now Ryan on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball. When you put up a token press, Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. But that certainly felt like an example of the defense just saying, okay, <laughs> we've had enough. We've gotten mashed all night long. About time we got a good play in. But flip it over to the offensive side. They've got to be really upset that they allowed a play like that to happen. They were pitching such a great game. They want to keep it going. Well, they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. The Falcons on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. Here it's third and two. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. All start offense. And that'll set them back five. Still third down. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. This is Coleman. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Oh, pardon me. That play brought back memories. Watching them string it out. 
Letting the runner get all the way to the sideline area, but not letting him get out of bounds. They formed that picket fence and didn't allow him through. Not only that, got him for a loss as well here. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Mohamed Sanu, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Falcons cut into that lead. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, uh, yeah. yeah, you know. It doesn't you gotta, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. On second down, Kamara. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. A busy night continues for Kamara. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. Down to the 25. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. So they settled for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. The left side completion to Jones. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. He goes underneath to Freeman. 20! And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Devontae Freeman. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Falcons get a bit closer. Okay, so they got the score. Do you go for one here and save the possible two-point conversion for later? I think you do because if you go for two here and you don't get it, that's deflation. Yeah. Now you wonder why you're even going for it. Take the easy one now and come back and try and get it later. And the Saints hands team able to rein this one in. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because... We've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And we have that in the NFL. 
the miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time, ball popped free. Phil Duffy picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978, I think it was in November.